Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking Android box. This is called GT5000 Pro. It's a premium box as the indicated on the box as I'm showing you right now. This is done by a company called Saro and it is a phenomenal box. It comes with 4 GB of RAM, 32 GB internal storage and also this is running AM Logic S905X4 chipset. On top of that, this will be running the 5G network, plus it's a gigabit LAN. It comes with Bluetooth 5.0. And I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon select all in order to get notified once we have a new video up. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. In here are all the components that are part of this box. It comes with this user manual. You can see that it is very simple, but has a lot of information inside of it. What's inside of the package, which we are covering right now. Also connections, how we're going to be able to connect it to the TV, which we will cover in this video. And going on to installation and also some troubleshooting tips. Going to the back has the actual remote and all the functions that if you want to learn. Now, another good part is that they have learning features for the actual remote. And also we'll talk to you about the blue light and the red light, what it really means. If you need more information about the warranty, you can scan this and go next and it will really help you out. So it comes with this card and on one side you have aspects and also the connections, it talks about it, which we will cover in this video. You have their model number right in the bottom. Now when you flip it in the back, it also says thank you and the warranty information is in the bottom of it. They do have a little QR code in the bottom, which you can scan. And also, if you need to register your device, you can go to their website in order to process that. The next part is the power supply. Now, this is 5 volt, 2 amps. It is created for Canada, United States. It's designed really well. And here's the connector that will go to the box itself. It does come with HDMI cable. It does come with a remote. And you have to take it out of the plastic. Now, this remote is similar to one of the other brands but it has all of the functions and features on it, which you really need for this box itself. I have to mention that this is an IR remote. This is an Android box. You really require to get an air mouse remote. And here is the big moment, the box itself. Now this is how it looks. It's sitting inside of a little plastic so it doesn't get scratched up. But once you take it out, this is how it really nicely designed. When you go to the front, to the sides, I really like this design how everything came together so it will work for you. Now I have to mention that this comes in four different colors as I'm showing you on the side. And the one that they have provided for me is the red color. I really like this because it stands out. I always see is black, black. This is really cool that they have different color selections so you can choose which one you want to play with. But I really like that little design on the top and then their name on the top. All right, so going to the front part of it, you have a nice button. Now, this is for turning on and turning off. I really like that that is called GT Series. Now, going on one side of it, this is the IR sensor. Going to the one side, you have the TF card reader, which can read up to 128 gigabyte. And then USB 3.0, USB 2.0. Go into the back part of it, you have an AV port, so you can also help you out if you ever wanted to place it on recovery. You have a gigabit LAN, you have a HDMI connection, an optical audio connection, so you could connect it to older type of stereo system. And then you have a AC, which will be 5 volt, 2 amps. Going on the other side, there's nothing there, but when you go to the bottom, it has a lot of holes for ventilation. You have a little, and it has your serial number in MAC address. But you have a nice sticker in the bottom that will tell you which model it is, who made it, and then the FCC ID. And you have four little lakes, so when you put it on the table, it doesn't really move that much, which is a really cool thing to have. And you can see that I'm trying to push it. And enough said, let's get this connected. So we always suggest that you connect your HDMI wire first, and then the power. And then you're going to see the power being lit, that means it is on. Now, as soon as you turn it on, this is what you will see is their logo. And then it should 
just switch to an animation. And yes, it has that little music in the background and that's it. This is what you will see for very, very first time when you turn it on. And here you go. This is how the main screen looks. It's pretty cool the way that they have placed everything together. Kind of reminds me of another box, but I really like this. So their name is on the top. You have settings, you have time and date, and then your weather. The widget looks really cool, by the way. Now going on the bottom, you have live TV, VOD, PVR, and EPG. But now going more down while it's installing some other apps, it doesn't allow me to go next. So we're just going to wait for this to happen. And here you go. So this is the main screen once you go in. So you have your four icons on the top, and then you have the all applications, which also shows on the bottom. And the best part is that even if you don't want one of these apps like this one, I'm just going to click OK on it. You'll get a little button that says move, click on it, and then you can move it away, press OK, and just resides there. So this way on the main screen, you do not see it. Same thing you can do for your shortcuts. You can add more by just clicking OK, and then going through and you can select one of these. So as an example, I will click on VLC, say yes, press back, and it shows up. Now you can also move this by pressing the OK for a couple of seconds. You will get this little pop-up that says move, remove shortcut, or even uninstall the app. Click on move, go one, press OK, and it just stays there, that's it. That's how easy it is. And when you go into the apps, these are the default apps that is pre-installed on the box, so you can play with them. That's not the only thing. You also have live TV and more. So now go on on the settings part. It's on the top and yes, this is how everything looks. So you have settings and also server settings, you can click on it. And this is where you will be able to set up your server settings. The next part I really like is how they have set up your time and widget over here too. So it just moves from the back to the front. But inside of it, you will be able to see that if you're connected via Wi-Fi, you can come here, click on it, and it takes you to your Wi-Fi list and you can connect or you can see if your Bluetooth is on or off and same with LAN connection. I am connected via LAN for the meantime. And another thing is your update. You can click on it automatically it takes you to your update and you can check for update if there is anything available. There you go. Another thing that I really like is once you get out of this is the image. Now you can put background in this. How it's possible is you got to click on this. Now I have to mention that you have to download some files or pictures, put it on an SD card or you can move it from your computer to this. If you need another video about that, please ask, we will make that for you. Except that you can go to this three little lines and then go to downloads where we reside our pictures and here you go. These are some that we have downloaded. So if I have to select something like this, it will be in the background. You can see it that it's so nicely just changed the background. Yes, you can change it again by just clicking OK on it. And then this time you're going to be able to select something different like this one. It's a little bit darker. Just have to double click on it and it will be there. Here you go. You see that now the colors are really cool and matching because of the actual box is red color. When you go to the Sorrow Utilities, when you click on it, there are some little parts like update. Also, you can change your launcher to different ones. So something like this is the classic. There you go, this is how it looks. And by the way, when you go to the side, you can see that it's so interactive. You can select certain things and in the bottom, you have your apps and also you can create your selection or add more apps to this or something like this. We will select something like Geekbench on this, say yes. And then when you press back, it shows up in the bottom right over here. You can see that it's so cool. Another thing is that if you go to settings and then you're going to change background, same way you have to say allow and it takes you back to that same section click on it go to download because i put everything under download and now we can change the background to something like this with the colors and voila now the background changed so when i go to the main screen also it's really cool with the classic background you can have that too click on settings again and then we're going to go back into the utilities and here you can go to home screen and we can change it to the Sorrow Media Player. This is their older version of 
player yes you can just have a bunch of icons and you can also have folders in there so you can have a different section for everything that you need something like video players movies tv shows you can have different parts and even if you have games you can make another folder you can name it and it will be able to process now another cool thing is if you go up as you can see right now it went right over here you can also change the background on this just have to say allow go back over here say download because i put everything there and i can select one of these backgrounds and there you go now it's changed again when you go back on the top you have to make sure that you make this one blue color selected you will go back to the settings and here you can go back to utilities home screen and change it to the second one which is this is called sorrow and this is the media player too. And this is really cool too, that if you don't like to have everything as a big colors or big icons, this will change it to squares so you can play with it. Now on this one too, you can go to settings, which is right around here. So you can take it and go to the right and it will change to settings. You can also change background in this too, same way. Yes, I gotta do this one by one in order for you guys to see it. And you can go to download. And now we can select the earth, which is really cool. And there you go. Now it is nice and smooth. Go back to the main screen. This is how it looks. So I really like this. And let's go back to the utilities and we will change it back to the main one that we always like, which is the modern sorrow modern is called in here you go this is how it really looks so we're going to keep it right over here but when you click on it this is we war for utilities the next part is called the weather widget itself we can change it from fahrenheit to celsius or back and forth so this way it gets the proper number now you can lock your location or you can leave it unlocked i really like to leave it unlocked so this way i get my all weather going to be coming from wherever i reside so if i take my box with me to vacation this will be changing for the location that i'm in because it uses my ip address to get the proper weather for me except that here we go this is how it's done all right so the first thing that we're going to go through as a benchmark is going to be youtube app so when you launch it to see exactly what type of quality we're getting and as you can see this is 4k so here you go, there are some informations about it. You can see that right now the frame rate on this is 1080p because of our capture card, but information about YouTube. Next thing I want to go to is going to be Netflix. Now, Netflix, on another hand, do require for you to have a subscription with them. It is not free, so you need to subscribe in order to see this part and log in. Except that you require to have an Air Mouse remote so you can scroll up or scroll to the right to the left in order for you to play videos and once you go through one of the videos something like this it will tell you that this is not 4k there's no way that you can get this on hd so as you can see on the top this is sticking to the 540p and it doesn't go over so it's better than 480p but it's under 720p so it's not actual HD, which is 720p falls under. So this is still going to be standard definition. The next app that we're going to go through is Disney Plus. Here is a little cool thing. If your TV is 4K, you have to set up your box as 4K and your TV setting should be on 4K. And now when you go into one of the movies, it will show up as 4K. So when you click on it, right over here that it says HD will change to 4K. But for now, because I'm capturing it on 1080p, it only shows up as HD, which is a really cool thing. Again, it will work for you perfectly on this box. And when you go up, it has a lot of genres. And how do you know that you have the 4K version of the app running on this? Is that these icons will be animated. So as you can see right now that I'm going over, it shows a little animation behind it. This is very easy way to figure out if you have a 4K app or not working on your box. Now, another app that is compatible with this is going to be Prime Video. And you do require to have your Prime subscription through the Amazon Prime account. And then you can come through and you can play any of these videos that you can see here or more. But you require to have your username and password and log in in order for you to play with these. Now, another thing that we have done is Geekbench. So when you go to it, you can see for your single core, we received 140 six and for multi-core we received 518 which for the os 11 running on s 905x4 chipset with four gigabyte of ram this is a really cool number to see it 
Another thing that we have run on this is going to be DRM check. Now this has a lot of internal information that you're looking for. Something like the name is written properly. And yes, it starts rearranging itself. The release code is 11. You can see that this is running on 32-bit, which we're going to cover in a couple of seconds. But again, all of the information is there. The max HDCP level is supported, yes. But then this is what we're connected to. So it says none where we are connected to. The version on this is 1.2. Now going under white wine CDM, this has a lot of information that will talk to you when you are trying to figure out what is going to be working and what is not going to work. So something like rating as number one, that means as most of those apps that you see should be running on HD or 4K because of level number one. These, a lot of geeks will understand what we are talking about, but the current HDCP level is none, is that means is your monitor, your TV. And then the maximum level supported is none, is again because we don't have anything through our capture card so we can get it on 4K. So we're just using our 1080p version of it and that's why it says all none. But if we had it 4K, I'm sure they will give us a number right over here. So this is how you know more about this. Now the best app, that we can come up is called AIDA64. This gives you a lot of internal information that you're looking for. There are some that will fall behind. We will cover it and I know that AIDA64 people will look into this video and can catch and they can fix this. So here you go, number one, it says type is TV. The manufacturer is Drite Logic. You can see the model number is written properly, which is GT5000. And also the board name is Drite Logic. The board is called OHM. Going down, a lot of information is there. Something like your main serial number. It actually shows up. I have to co I have to cover that. The next part is how many gigabyte of RAM you have, which is four. How much is in total right now? How much is available? And then going down the storage itself on this is 32 gig, and you can see how much is been captured and how much is available. The Bluetooth is something that we know by heart that this is 5.0, but for some reason, maybe it's because of the board that shows 4 plus. Another thing is going to be under CPU. You can see that the core architecture on this is 4X, which is its quad core processor. It is running on Cortex A55, which is running on 2004 megahertz. Actual chip is 64 bit, but it is running on 32 bit because of the software and because of the board going on the CPU core is four. You can see that it is running from 100 to 2004 megahertz. The ones that are running and sleeping CPU utilization is about give and take 21%. And also the governor is, you can see that it says schedule and going down more into information, we already mentioned that this is running on 32 bit. That's why you see V7 and not V8. Now, if you go to display, you can see that the native resolution on this is 1080p, but it can capture up to 4K, that outburst to the TV. Now it is running DPI on this S61. It GPU is ARM and it is Molly G31, which is a single core processor. And then the fresh rate is 60 Hertz. Everything is set up as a landscape mode. The OpenGL is 3.2. That means if you want to play a video game on this, will work perfectly with your Bluetooth connection or wired connection. And now when we turn on the Wi-Fi, you can see the Wi-Fi comes up and then 5G band is supported. That's what we are looking for. Now, if we go under Android, it is running Android Red Velvet Cake. The API level is 30. And the also security level is not that far back, which is a really good thing. And that's what we want. So we do not have to worry about vulnerability on this OS. Now going down has more information, but the one that we really looking for is going to be terminal because it shows your SOC terminal that is actual chip on it. It is running about 61 or 62 maximum. So it's not really hot and go into DDR, which is going to be your RAM runs about the same thing. And we don't have a battery, so we don't have to worry about this part. Now, the next part that a lot of people do ask is going to be Kodaks. So if we scroll all the way in the bottom, you will be able to find your H264, VP9, VP8, going up a little bit, MPEG4, you can see that. Also HEVC, which is not really important anymore. And also H263, which is not that much important. AVC is there and going up, there are some ones that you are really looking for. I'm just trying to find it. Maybe I am just missing it as I'm looking. There's AV1 that everybody wants is right over here. So that is the main one. And VP9 is right here. So that all 
these ones are the ones that a lot of people are asking for to make sure these box have it we will play a video to show you exactly how smooth this will play the next part that we want to capture is going to be live tv yes this part is going to be a little bit interesting and a little bit big so have your eye just study on it now there's a few things that you have to understand when we're going through some servers that you're going to get from which we do not support or sell is going to give you some parts something like some of the places that i am getting questions from is epg some of those people does not support epg or they cannot pull it that's why you cannot see it and no these guys cannot help you on the box it's done by your subscription next part is radio it just depends who's going to give you the subscription they can tell you if you have it or not but if you have it it will show up on your screen like this so the first part is going to be live tv let's go to it once you launch it you, now i have to mention this type of screens and menus now i have to mention that i'm going to blur out certain parts because of the youtube nature but except that when you go to the right you're going to get a list now the one that i have is a very small and minimal but here you go this is what you can see for now that yes you can go through it if you look in the bottom you have that green button now on your remote you have a green button that you can press and you're going to get this type of menu that you can hide certain ones work except that yes another way is that you can move your genre to go up and that way you can move it up or down which is a really cool thing so if you put a little check mark on it by pressing ok and then press the blue one and then you can able to just move it up or first one on the list and then press ok on it now it's going to move up so if you press back you can see that greek just went up and the rest came down which is a really cool thing so that's not the only thing if you press the back button you're going to get your list and in the bottom you little buttons again so you can lock your channel sort favorite and click on search by pressing the blue button and this way you can search for your channels that you're looking for and also even if you want to erase it this is all going to happen right